Hello, all. welcome to the course Introduction to GIS. I am K. Balasubramani from India. I am teaching this course this semester with you. So, we will start with the first presentation, which is on fundamental concepts in GIS. I hope everyone knows about GIS, it stands for Geographic Information System. And geography, you know that it's related to the science of where, where exactly the things located. And information, of course, whatever you collect from the geography, we call it as a data, and data can be converted into various forms of information. And system, of course, it is very much required to organize the data you collected and to process the data into information. So basically, GIS do collecting spatial data from the space, from the earth surface, and utilize it for various information generation for solving day-to-day -day problems. GIS essentially from the concept of map, because maps are essential for understanding the world around us, and it will allow us to look at the surroundings very easily and we can with the help of map we can navigate the world around and also help us to make informed decision of course maps provide a visual representation of a spatial relationship and you can able to understand the spatial relationship in a better say for example surrounding north carolina what are those states are there instead of elaborating or describing if I show you maps with this kind of labels, you can able to understand easily to the north, what are the states, to the east, to the west, and you can easily able to understand the spatial relationship. On the other hand, the database allows us to store, retrieve, analyze, and data of millions and millions very efficiently. And of course, this database concepts help us to maintain the data integrity as well as facilitate us for efficient data processing. Since it's have a proper structure, we can able to manage large amount of data without even sophisticated softwares and we can able to handle the digital data very effectively for various purposes. GIS is fundamentally a combination of both these two revolutionary aspects, the map and database. Hence, GIS is also called as a spatial database. If you look at this map, it's without any name and other information because map can able to show the spatial relationship but it could be able to display on our few amount of information or themes you call it as key. But whereas database is able to store large amount of data of each and every entity. So if you manage both the things, you can able to extract the potential of both. That's what the GIS do. We call it as a spatial database. So the moment you click this boundary, you can able to understand all its data so that you can store the data efficiently in a GIS and those data can be used to map it very effectively. So GIS is a computer assisted system for capturing, storing, retrieving, analyzing, and displaying spatially referenced data. In simple words, it is a computer system that we use to analyze geographical data and display geographically referenced data. And of course, this technology helps us to understand various spatial relationships which is very essential to solve many environmental and day-to-day -day problems. Historically, GIS developed from cartography, it's a science of map making, and computer-assisted design or computer-assisted drawing systems, we call it as a CAD, and DBMS, database management systems. So this is the successive historical aspects or technological development of GIS. It starts from cartography, cartography become computer-based cartography, we call it as a digital cartography with the help of CAD and 
digital based management system and later it is called it as GIS and the development of GIS it's highly concurrent with the development or evolution of computer and IT developments so any technological advancements if you look at computer or IT sector that will impact or imply heavily on GIS GIS it's cross disciplinary nature it has well connection with the cartography in addition to cartography GIS also associated with remote sensing to collect data surveying and GPS instruments again to collect spatially referenced information statistics for processing the database like information and database of course you need and to maintain the integrity of the data and store large amount of data and computer assisted designing provides us the way to represent the or like entities on the earth in a computer fundamentally we should understand that before using gis is that data especially the data types basically there are two types of data used in gis that we call it as a spatial data and non spatial data non spatial data also call it as attribute data spatial data it's about the location so where a particular phenomenon or particular event or particular entity is located where it is located that we call it as a spatial data and what is it that is called non spatial data say for example if you look at this tree this tree is located somewhere so where it is located called the spatial data and what kind of tree it is it's called non spatial or attribute data how can i make data spatial because attribute data in general we know better about it but spatial data how can i manage it or make it you can make spatial data with the help of latitude and longitude we call it as absolute positioning using what you call coordinate systems later we will discuss about in detail or you can use a grid coordinate system say for example you can take a piece of land and you can divide with the x axis and y axis or grids and for each grid intersections you can assign some number and you can use those numbers and of course data can be uh, prepared as a spatial data with the help of place names with the help of postcode or even with the help of distance and pairing so these are all the ways to make our data spatial and of course each data especially the spatial data can be attached with attributes and those attributes can be it can be a text or it can be a number or it can be anything so depend upon the type of information or attribute you want to store and you can generate the field and you can attach with the spatial data say for example here there is a like a bus station so this bus station attribute information all can be stored in a database this spatial data although exist in a different forms on at surface but to simplify the representation of spatial data on gis there are like certain approaches one of the most important approach is representing spatial data using point line and polygon symbols so depend upon the scale later we will discuss about it depend upon the scale you can represent any geographical information using these three entities point line and polygon say for example a well can be located or represented as point a river can be represented as line a forest can be represented as polygon so this is the form these are all the forms we normally use in map as well so the same we are using in gis so that's why the gis is derived from the science of map making called cartography this spatial data represented like spatial data point line or polygon can be stored into two models we call it as a vector model and raster model 
later in this course we will discuss about what is vector model what is raster model in detail but as a nutshell in a nutshell vector model will be stored as a geometric objects using point line and polygons whereas the raster model will be stored as image file with the, which with composed of like a grid cells we call it as a pixels so both representing same spatial information with the same like entity relationship but with a different format one is in vector model another one is raster model so both have advantageous aspects as well as disadvantages or limitations vector data are very good to represent very precise boundaries of linear futures point futures or even polygon futures and can be used efficiently for various analysis with the less amount of data space and of course it is very helpful for defining spatial relationship especially if you have a connection from one entity to another entity especially the one we used for network analysis the limitation is it is a discrete so you can't say by looking at what it is by, by looking this like a future you can't like uh, say it because it, 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 it will not show the reality for our eyes rather it requires some like kind of information associated with or legend with that then only we can able to understand rest rest of data it is pretty good especially to show the real spatial information on the earth surface so it is very good for representing data without any gap but the problem is it is taking much storage space especially if you want to high resolution images or highest resolution images and the file size of the data model raster data model will be very high it's very difficult to handle especially if you are covering a larger area so both these models help us to integrate the spatial information into gis and of course although we say vector model and raster model of two different types but in most of the cases we will use together in order to integrate the data and represent the reality so what you are looking it's about combination of both vector data and raster data this GIS using a, a database approach, we call it as GeoRDBMS, Georelational Database Models, which means the attribute information and spatial information are linked for storing, retrieving, analyzing, and representing the spatial information or geographical information. Say for example, in the database, if you click or if you select something, it will be shown on the map or on the map. If you click something, it will be shown over the database as well, which means both the data, data sets are linked so that we can able to generate more and more amount of information with using these geo-relational data models. So using this geo-relational database models, we can able to perform various types of GIS analysis. Basically the analysis are to derive new information from existing databases. So you can manipulate the database spatially and you can able to generate new information to solve various problems. It is sometimes very difficult with the help of database alone in excel c if you want to identify the buildings those are all just within 500 meter from the coast it's very difficult but with the help of map you can able to do it but map represents only the spatial like information not all detail in the database since the georelational model integrate both so using map you can able to select all large like amount of details and using which you can able to do various analysis so the gis gives us very like a different kind of benefits which includes high quality spatial analysis better information management and we can able to do what if scenarios which means modeling we can able to do it in a better manner 
and of course it improves the project efficiency in the past mostly gis used for data conversion from traditional maps to digital maps and more of adding or tagging more attributes with converted maps and perform very little amount of spatial analysis but nowadays data sets are available in digital form directly with the help of satellite with the help of like a gps or with the help of other like a digital technologies you can able to collect data digitally and of course most of the data acquisition systems also acquire the attributes associated with the spatial information so we no need to do much about the data conversion and tagging rather we have enough time or enough like a systems for spatial analysis so now we are more focus on spatial analysis with the help of gis rather than simply map making so the future of gis will be effective utilization of a spatial analysis in crop incorporating two dimensional three dimensional even four dimensional as well in order to represent how the things changed over time the gis initially it starts from project based only limited people work and later it become enterprise based various like agencies also utilize gis for solving like country's problem and other environmental problems and even for planning and other purposes and now it become more of web based and with the help of artificial learning machine learning and even like augmented reality and other forms of technological development the gis changes the way we are like look at the earth okay so it help us to like integrate various informations into a single domain and we can able to visualize various what if scenarios efficiently with the help of gis for this there are like softwares which are of commercial basis and even there are open sources and depend upon your budget you can choose the commercial like a packages of open sources for utilizing the gis capabilities gis have very good learning resources and there are like a many sites which are offering you free learning materials and these are all some of the important uh, sites where you can able to get more of gis related materials so keep watch the remaining videos materials go through materials and do your assignments and happy learning and we will make it this course very wonderful thank you